Hey everyone, I'm Sonia Tydinko, and on this episode, we're going to sit down with the very kind and giving Roni Turioff. Stay tuned, this is Warriors World TV. Hi everyone, I'm here with Roni Turioff today. Roni, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Okay, so you've been out with the knee injury. Um, so having been sidelined from the injury and going through the tough season that the team has has been through this year, um, how difficult has that been for you to deal with? Uh, it's been very difficult. Uh, it's been unfortunate for me personally uh, to have to deal with a knee injury. I think uh, all those years of playing national team basketball in the summer definitely caught up with me, but uh, I'm healthier now and hopefully I can be ready to go for tomorrow. And defense is a huge part of your game. So why do you think that the team has struggled defensively this year? Well, you have to put everything in perspective. We are a high, fast break, fast paced team. So therefore, other teams are going to have definitely more opportunities to score. And we play at such a fast pace that uh, it's going to be tougher to, uh, to stop people. But I think uh, we definitely put emphasis into trying to stop those guys. But we have a, a group of guys that have to play fast in order to succeed. I think uh, there is a stat that we are 1 in 16 when we score under 100 points. So we have to speed the game up. And I think uh, if we have everybody healthy, we'd have definitely a better record. And what will you be working on um, specifically in the offseason to improve for next season? Uh, uh, my main goal are uh, conditioning, 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 and rehabbing the knee. So if, I, if I'm in better shape, I can play at a, at a better level, at a higher level for a longer period of time. And I think I can definitely help this team by being on the basketball court and not on the sideline. Now let's talk about your um, involvement with the community. You found you, you established the Roni Turioff Heart to Heart Foundation, and you've recently been recognized in the NBA. You, you just got the NBA um, Cares Assist. Community Assist Award, and you got the Hero Award from El Cerrito High School. How does that make you feel to be able to give back through this foundation? It makes me feel fantastic. Uh, it, it makes me feel really good as a human being. I was once in a situation where I, I, I was helpless, and I think it's definitely uh, gratifying for me to be recognized as far as all the effort that I put out there, uh, especially with the, with the team behind me, with the Warriors behind me, with the PR and CR department behind me, just trying to help, help me accomplish things. It definitely feels good, and uh, I can't wait to keep on doing it. And uh, with your guys' help by spreading the word around, my foundation is going to get bigger and bigger. And I think once my foundation get bigger and bigger, I can help more people. So I think uh, it's the best of both worlds. And you recently just launched RoniTurioff21.org. Can you tell us what we what we might see if we get to go to that site? Well, if you go to my website, RoniTurioff21.org, you're going to get a close-up on my life, where I grew up, uh, little stories about me growing up, my roots. You're going to get some good music because I put some of my favorite songs. On, the, on my website, you're gonna get uh, f uh, pictures of me on the basketball court, of the basketball court, me and my friends. Uh, you're gonna have a, a news about my foundation. So pretty much, it's a really close-up look of Ronnie Turioff. It's, it's, it's how, what passion me, and I think I have a, a peeps corner where I talk about every week about stuff that that I have interest in, movies, restaurants and stuff like that. So I think uh, it's a close-up look, and the more people go on there, I think the more I'm going to be uh, definitely happier about it and uh, take it to another level. Now, I went to that website. It's a really nice website. Thank you. I heard um, you had Bob Marley, yes. and you also had you had O Fortuna, which is that creepy, kind of scary classical music yeah, song. Yeah, it's, it's, it's the, the, one of my favorite movies, The Gladiator. That's, uh, that's what it was from, and I put it on purpose on the foundation website to kind of put that kind of like a feel good but also feel sad type of movie because uh, yeah, yeah. I'm, that's, that's kind of cool that you, that, that, that you, that you get that. That's, I'm very impressed. You did your homework. I, I always do and I, I found a lot of good stuff about you so, so good job. Um, who, who were some of the people that inspired you growing up? Like who was your Roni Turioff? The people that inspired me were uh, a lot of people. My mom definitely inspired me to be to be a better human being on a daily basis uh, my grandpa definitely inspired me rest in peace grandpa uh, because the way he carried himself and the way he was so dedicated to his family to his work and to everything that was happening in his life 
And on the basketball court, uh, it was Tim Duncan and Kevin Garnett. Uh, those two players definitely showed me the way uh, the basketball game should be played. And uh, that's why I started playing basketball. Okay, so we all know you're a huge movie buff. Um, and you, I, I read or I, I saw that you said you would rather be behind the camera. So if you had to pick someone to play you on camera, who would it be? Great question. Great question. You have to be somebody tall. Ah, uh, not really. I guess R. Kelly. Yes, because I think somebody, one day one of my friends told me that uh, R. Kelly is a pretty good basketball player and he kind of looks out at me with a, with a straight up braid. So I would have to pick R. Kelly because he's kind of tall. So I guess that's the closest person that I would say could be like a Ronnie Toriaf out there. All right. And who would you pick to be your female love interest? Uh, <laughs> I think I played, I played the fifth on that one. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, nah. You might get your wish. No way, no way I get that wish. Uh, so I played the fifth on that one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. Um, what is your favorite sports movie of all time? Tough call, tough call, tough call. Um, Remember the Titans. All right, that's a good one. And um, you're from the beautiful island of Martinique. Yeah. And I know you miss home, but what is it about the Bay Area that makes you comfortable, comfortable enough so that missing home isn't so bad? Well, missing home is really bad. So regardless of where I am, it's always difficult. But uh, I think that one of the things that reminds me of home is when I go to Pier 49 down San Francisco and I go and have French crepes and I go have chocolate crepes and I just go and work, walk by the beach and stuff, by the waters. That's definitely something that reminds me of home. And I definitely feel, feel good about it. And, uh, and yes, I think that's, that's the closest thing that I can remind me of my house, because the weather is not the same. I get fooled by the weather here. I look through my window, it's all sunny and everything. I'll go outside with a pair of shorts and t-shirts, then I'm cold, so I gotta be careful about that. <laughs> and tell us, what's the best part about being a professional athlete and one of the worst parts? The best part is my life, uh, the overall life, and the worst part is my overall life. Uh, it, with great things, a lot of a lot of that is being asked out of you. Um, it's very very stressful to be a professional athlete. Uh, people seem to always see the glamour and the money and all that stuff that comes with it, but they don't see all the hard work that we have to put in and all the behind the scenes stress that we have. And I think uh, it's just a matter of just living your life to the fullest on a daily basis and try to be as happy as you can and try to make it happen.